you know, we've seen Uri Slavkovsky the past couple of practices being out there with Dr. Shot prior to practice for significant, you know, 45 minutes at a time doing all sorts of shooting drills. Like it's something that's really sort of been driven into him. Uh, I think getting the results in Washington with his shot obviously provides added motivation. So let's see. And I think a lot of fans would, would note that, uh, a lot of our listeners would note that that the power play goal Uri Slavkovsky scored came on a pass from Mike Matheson, who <laughs> seen a lot of chatter on on the Twitter bot on the Twitter box that uh you know that Mike Matheson refuses to pass to Slavkovsky on the power play. Yeah. Well, it's you know let's see if see he's turned a new leaf uh, on that one with with Slavkovsky. And and I think a, a big issue with Slavkovsky earlier in the season was not only that he wasn't shooting, and I think maybe this ha- might have had something to do with Mike Madison not passing it to him, is that when he was in that right circle, if you watched his feet, his feet would be pointed back at Matheson. And they were not – he was not setting himself up to shoot prior to getting the pass. He was setting himself up to pass, mm-hmm. and which made him very predictable because any defender, whether it's a forward or a defenseman, will see that. We'll see his feet and okay, he can't, he literally can't shoot with his skates pointing away from the net. Um, so the threat to shoot wasn't there, uh, which made passing more complicated because the, the penalty killers were playing the pass more. So as long as he gets his feet set to shoot and he's ready to do it, whether he does it or not, will affect how the penalty killers play him. Um, but he has to force them to respect that shot. And, and the more he shoots it, the more goals he scores, the more goal, the more those goals wind up on highlight reels. Uh, the more players see those goals, um, the more they're going to respect that shot, and the more things open up potentially for Cole Caulfield on the other side, which is what we've you know been waiting to see from the Canadians' power plays. Is there someone there that can get attention away from Cole Caulfield now with Alex Newhook returning? Being in the bumper spot, he could potentially be a guy who can do that. But really, if Slav can become a major shooting threat from that right circle, then maybe that opens things up for Cole Caulfield pretty significantly and allows him uh, and allows him some some time and space to do some things. And I, I really like the I really like the Cole Caulfield on the goal line kind of experiment that's going on here, and 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 both him and Suzuki on that on that one timer side. Um, I feel like the power play kind of turned around when they did that yeah. a little while ago, and it really creates some different interesting looks. But again, that only works if the guy on the opposite side of the ice is a threat. So let's see if that continues for your Slavkovsky. Well, you remember when we sat down with Slavkovsky prior to his draft, we were at the Combine in Buffalo, and he said yeah. how he perceived himself more as a playmaker and a passer than a shooter. And yes. There was last season, even at the beginning of this season, he seems to he seemed to defer a lot to more established NHL guys, and and he looked at passing all the time. But I think, as as you pointed out, that if he can establish himself more as a dual threat, mm-hmm. uh, it's going to have a huge impact both for him and for his line mates too. And I think that even though he's He's more. He's got more the mentality of the passer, and and he likes to to let his his vision, you know, dictate his course. Which of he still he still feels that way. Just for the record, it's yeah, not yeah. just something. It's not something he thought only in the combine. He, I talked to him about that like a month ago, and he still he still feels that way. Exactly, but yeah. at the same time, he he needs he needs to make the 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 other team think about what he's mm-hmm. about to do, and. The couple of goals that he scored against Washington uh, are, are an interesting message that's being sent. Of course, that that one timer is is significant, but probably the first goal is also something that's even more encouraging because it means I'm I'm trying things with my hands, toe dragging it, getting on the inside, and you know aiming right. I think that he that was a Magnificent goal, and now we've got a Slavkovsky who's who, who's up to seven goals and eight assists in his last 21 games. So mm-hmm. it's not a point per game, but the, this last bit, 21 games, that level of production is yeah, it's, is, is about as as good as you can hope for a second second uh, year guy 
playing for a team such as the Montreal Canadiens. Well, not just a second year guy, a 19 year old guy. Um, you know, that's a quarter of a season. And, 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 and the thing about those numbers is that it's, it's so obvious watching over that span of time that the numbers don't tell the whole story in his case. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's the things he's doing off the puck, the, the, the recoveries we've talked about it so much, but it remains relevant because he continues doing those things. Just in Washington. I mean, I thought the two best plays, aside from the toe drag goal, you know, the two Suzuki goals in the first period, Slavkowski made plays on those that didn't result in points. One was a quick track back to pressure the puck on the, on the exit for Washington, which led to a bad pass into Nikola uh, Obe Kubel skates in the neutral zone. Cole Caulfield being in the right position to cut that off, create a disruption and get that turnover and then set up Suzuki with the beautiful saucer pass. But that initial track back, that hard track back by, by Uri Slavkowski really set the wheels in motion for that goal. And on the second goal, um, you know, he runs a pick on Alex Ovechkin. Ovechkin was furious after the goal and then immediately ties up Joel Edmondson in front to prevent him from getting in the shooting lane as well, which allowed Jack Kai's shot to get through, hit the post, let goes to Suzuki and he has an open net to shoot at. So little details in his game <clears throat> that continue improving. Um, I mean, just it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to watch and fun to watch if he can keep this going, you know, for the rest of the season, um, which I think is, I think Slavkowski is like a good proxy to talk about Martin St. Louis, you know, second anniversary as coach, because this is really his, his magnus opus, you know, this is his, this is his big work of art so far as the transformation in your Slavkowski and the work that he's done with him. And he was asked a question, uh, <clears throat> I believe it was on Thursday, uh, if the organization takes any pride in the fact that they kept him in the NHL, that they didn't send him down, yeah. um, that they decided to work with him at the NHL level. And Martin's answer was no, just a flat no. <laughs> he didn't elaborate. Then it was sort of re-asked in a different way. And, and, and he went, you know, it's easy to look back and say, Oh yeah, well, we're the best. We kept him here, but he doesn't have to say that, but I think it's worth pointing out that there were definitely members of the Canadians organization who were, who were at least contemplating the idea, like, are we doing more bad than good here? Should we send him to Laval, let him get his confidence back like they did with Arbor Jackai, like they've done with Justin Barron. Now there were definitely conversations to that effect. And it's, it's hard. I, I believe Martin went to bat to say, no, I want to keep this guy here. Let me work with him. I'm, I'm doing something with him. I need to complete that. I know he's going through a rough patch, but I need to complete that work. And, you know, the extent to which you're like has been receptive is a big part of it, but Martin's ability to communicate to young players, uh, is really been, you know, two years into his coaching tenure with the Canadians is really his strength is really something that is, makes him a perfect fit for the Canadians right now is his ability individually with players to communicate ideas, concepts, situational decision-making, all sorts of things that he does in the video room. Uh, that really resonate with these guys. And every conversation I have with, with any player asking about their one-on-one -on -one work with Marte, it's, it's just effusive praise, like over the top praise. I talked yeah. about it with Jaden Struble this morning, just this morning. And his, his, his eyes, like his, he let out a megawatt smile. As soon as I asked the question, like, what has it been like sitting in video sessions with Marte St. Louis? Just like, He's blown away by it. Like he just, he can't, he can't. And, and so this is, you know, two years in, there's a lot of good that Martin has done, but I really think on an individual level, working with individual players and, and, and really creating tailor-made programs for these players um, has been and will continue to be his biggest strength as more and more of these young players arrive and need to make the transition into the NHL. And, and hopefully for the Canadian sake, have it go just as smoothly as it's gone for your Slavkovsky, despite the bumps in the road that, that happened. It's right now 
he's on a he's on a very very steep climb in terms of his progression. 